So when you ingest fructose, it turns into fat. If you ingest glucose, it can turn into fat, but at least you can burn it. I mentioned before, it has to do one of two things. At least the glucose can, can go this way and turn into ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which we can use as energy. Fructose cannot even do this. It has to be turned into fat first, and then later you can take the triglycerides and break them down, turn them into glucose, and finally turn them into, and turn that into energy. Now there's a lot of people out there that tell you, oh, fructose is the good sugar. It doesn't raise your insulin, it doesn't raise your blood sugar as much. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't raise your blood sugar, it doesn't raise your insulin as much, but does that mean that it's good for you? Well, no. The reason it doesn't do that is because it turns into fat. So you really want to stay away from high fructose corn syrup. And I'm going to show you later how this triglycerides leads to high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, terrible stuff. So you, now fructose, anybody know where fructose comes from? Fruit. fruit. It's a fruit sugar. So is fruit good for you? Not as good as you may think. But doc, fruit's natural, <laughs> right? How can it not be good for you if it's natural? Well, go ahead, I tell my patients, go ahead, find every piece of fruit you find growing in New Jersey and eat all you want. You're not going to find any. It's not natural to eat fruit 365 days a year from around the world. It's not natural. Now, when was fruit available? When is fruit generally available in New Jersey or t climates like this? Well, it's available at the end of the summer when the fruit ripens, right? And that's the only time of year it would normally be available. So now what's so important about the end of the summer? Well, that comes before the beginning of the winter. Let's go back in time 100,000 years ago before electricity and furnaces and heat and everything else, what did we used to do during the winter? We used to starve during the winter. We used to hibernate and starve. And if you were not fat before the winter came, you would never see the next spring. The biggest cause of death in the history of the human race is starvation. So becoming overweight used to be an advantage. So. It is designed to actually make us fat. If you are diabetic or overweight or have high triglycerides or low HDL, you should not be eating fruit. But doc, I love fruit. I crave fruit. And it's natural. You are addicted to something called sugar. We're born that way because we needed to actually crave this stuff so that we could get fat before the winter came so we wouldn't die when spring came. Does that make sense? Fructose, preferentially taken up in the liver, poorly utilized by the rest of the body, unable to be directly burned as energy, must be stored as fat in the liver, then burned as energy, raises triglycerides, lower a lowers HDL, the so-called good cholesterol. Sugar, extremely addictive in all, all forms. The more you have, the more you want. I don't eat any sugar. People know me. I know I'm a nut. I don't eat any fruit in general. I don't drink sweet drinks. Um, I don't eat cake or cookies or all those things. And guess what? I don't crave them. Now, I used to have a sweet tooth. I used to actually eat cheesecake every single night <laughs> until a friend of mine made me a homemade organic cheesecake. It was about three years ago. And it was for Thanksgiving. And I figured, you know what? I'm going to eat this thing before it goes bad. <laughs> Instead of having my one little piece every night, I had a big piece for lunch and a big piece for dinner. And I did that three days in a row. And after the third day, all of a sudden, I was sick as a dog. I was having diarrhea and stomach cramps. And I felt like, heck. And I said, wow, did I just poison myself? Is that really what just happened? And so at that point, I said, I'm not going to eat any of this stuff anymore. I'm, and so for the first week or two, I craved that thing. I dreamed about cheesecake and 
I looked when I walked in the supermarket and said, oh, man, look at that. That looks so good. And then after about two weeks, I was like, wow, I don't crave this stuff anymore. Now, every once in a while, I'll, go, I'll be in a social situation where I have to have sugar. Someone makes you a birthday cake. You're at a wedding, whatever it is. I was at a wedding about a month ago, and I had a piece of the, of the wedding cake. For two darn weeks, I crave sugar every single day, one piece. And every time I have that one piece now, it's like two or three times a year, I will crave it for about two weeks. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Do you crave sugar? Do you crave it every day? Does that mean it's good for you? You're addicted. Every single person in this room, unless you have zero sugar in your diet, is addicted to sugar. And even the sweet taste that you get from these artificial sweeteners can make you addicted to that taste. And then you just crave it. And the more you have, the more you want, and it's never enough. So one of my recommendations for you, if you do suffer from chronic degenerative diseases or you just want to not get one in the future, is eliminate that from your internal environment. It is an anti-nutrient. It's poisonous. But doc, my body craves this. Okay. Other metabolic poisons. Let me just go back and talk about sugar for a second. And let's go back and talk about that autonomic nervous system. Because this sort of ties it together. And I know, so what the heck does this have to do with anything? Let's backtrack. This lowers your blood sugar. This raises your blood sugar. Okay. I just ate something with sugar in it. All of a sudden, my blood sugar is going to go up. Guess what happens? When the sugar goes up, your body says, uh-oh, sugar's too high. We better activate the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. Then you activate all these things. Your insulin increases. Your body will convert it into fat. You may experience parasympathetic symptoms. How many people eat something and go, next thing you know, they've got a stuffy nose? Where they eat something, next thing you know, they feel really tired or they have a stomach ache, whatever it is. It may be that you're actually activating your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, does your blood sugar drops. Does it go back to normal? No, it actually goes too low in some people. Now, you're hypoglycemic. Guess what? Now you're going to activate your sympathetic nervous system. Next thing you know, now you start to have palpitations. You start to sweat. You get nervous. Now you just activated your sympathetic nervous system. So eating sugar, basically, just you're bouncing back and forth between parasympathetic and sympathetic. Now, how bad is this? Well, first of all, it can cause all these symptoms. Secondly, it's wearing out your adrenal glands. Because now you're putting out adrenaline, then you're putting out cortisol, back and forth. This is like driving your car. Can you imagine driving your car? You're going to slam on the gas for 15 seconds, then hit the brake. Then slam on the gas. I know there's people that drive like this. <laughs> and they're always in front of me when I'm trying to get to the hospital. But you don't drive that way. What's the best way to drive? You put your car on cruise control. You set it to 64.99 in a 65 mile an hour range. Depends on who's looking. And, and you want it to keep it right there. Well, for your body, you want to actually be slightly parasympathetic all the time. Rebuilding, repairing, have immune system, digest your food, blah, blah, blah. Slightly parasympathetic. And then when you really need to hit the gas, you hit the gas, boom. You can do something. You can work. You can interact. You can save your life. But the problem is, is you're, if you're slamming this and slamming that and slamming this and slamming that, what would you do to your car if you drove like that? You'd wear out the brakes. You'd wear out the spark plugs. You'd wear out the everything. Well, you're going to wear out your body. You're going to wear out your hormones, your adrenal glands, everything. Deplete your minerals. It's so bad for you. You have no idea.